Hi there, in this video I want to show you how to add a secondary glaze to your acrylic painting. Um, this is based on a portrait I'm doing of Daniel praying, uh, based off of scriptures in the Bible, where it said he prayed in front of the window facing Jerusalem uh, three times a day. And what I'm doing is adding ultramarine blue to this existing glaze that I had of raw umber dark. And I mix the ultramarine blue with matte medium to thin it out. It makes it very easy to apply. And it's, it's semi-transparent or translucent. So the light shines through, giving it greater depth. And it creates kind of a grayish color when you mix the ultramarine blue with the raw umber dark together. <clears throat> and so I'm applying it as rapidly as I can. And then I smooth it out and then go on to the next area. Uh, I hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas to really push that paint into the weave and the texture of the canvas and then lightly go over it to smooth it out. Now I'm starting on the other side making sure to paint on the left side because the highlight is on the right side. As you can see the window is on the right side of the painting and so I want to make sure I have the uh, shadow on the correct side of this curtain. <clears throat> Now I'm going to be moving on and going over another area and I'm just thinking about where should I go next with this color. I always try to use uh, a color somewhere else in the painting. So I figured let's put it on the uh, clothing of Daniel and start establishing the shadowed areas of his clothing, filling in all of those spots that I previously did. And now I have more separation between uh, this figure of Daniel and the background. Now you want to make decisions right away and figure out is the subject, which would be the person in this instance, uh, the subject in a painting is just the focal point in a portrait, usually it's a person or a pet or an object, but here uh, you want to decide is the subject going to be darker or lighter than the background. And in this case because I have that um, fire in the background, that uh, torch burning. I want to make the figure of Daniel darker than the background and I want to establish that right away. Many artists dive <clears throat> excuse me, right into the color part of the painting and they're very concerned about getting the right color mixed but it's much much more important to make sure that you get your values identified right away. You really want to um, see your values um, get them locked in. Make sure that um, you identify and distinguish between the foreground and background and know what is going to be lighter and what's going to be darker. So I, I decided based on my reference photo, and you can see that in the upper left on the Kindle there, um, that the figure of Daniel should be darker than the background. But that's only for the shadowed part of his figure. The highlight the highlighted portion of his figure, that's going to be lighter than the background. And so I covered that whole area of his clothing. Now I'm working into his hair and beard because again that's going to be darker. And as I mix that ultramarine blue glaze on top of the raw umber dark, the two working together create a neutral gray, kind of like a Payne's gray. And I start the painting off very simply, just mostly trying to establish the value structure, um, the lights and darks, the, the specific shapes where those lights and darks will go. That is a huge, huge component of creating realism. Um, it's not so much about the color. The color you can uh, be more concerned about later. Although we do also work the color in early on. This is not a, a classic grisaille technique where I'm doing a black and white monochromatic underpainting and then doing the color as a glaze just at the very end. No, it's just that um, I want to establish those values right away and leave some areas that are highlighted, leave some areas that are very light in value, almost basically untouched white canvas that I can then begin to glaze the color on top of. And as I glaze those colors on top of those areas, um, it'll create a real vibrancy because the white of the canvas will be reflecting the light that shines through the layers and then back to your eye again. 
<clears throat> now I'm just making some decisions of where I want to go next and looking at some uh, different images on my Kindle. And right now I want to paint, begin to paint the rug that Daniel is kneeling upon. And I'd imagine, you know, he had a nice Persian rug. He was a, um, an official for the government, a prime minister of sorts. And so um, I don't think he was in poverty. He was well taken care of. So uh, I'm putting a nice embroidered rug below him. And I'm just filling that in using a mixture of alizarin crimson um, and burnt sienna. And um, I think naphthal crimson, if I remember correctly. And just trying to get a nice rich red color established right away. And um, I want to make sure it's the right consistency. I don't want it to be too dark right away. Um, so I'm adding a little more matte medium into it just to make sure it covers well. And getting the, the mixture, the glaze, saturated in my bristles. So right now I'm using, I believe, a, a half inch flat. Um, I'm recording this audio on top of the um, video. So I, I'm trying to go by memory here. But um, just making sure that it covers nice and smooth in that area. And then I'll work it across going upward um, into the figure. I like to start on the edge. So I started basically on the edge of the canvas. Now I'm working my way upward towards the figure of Daniel. And then I really want to smooth that whole section out. So I'm just trying to study the reference photo. And it's very, very important to study your reference photo. You want to be looking at your reference photo at least half the time if possible. Um, I don't know if I always follow that rule myself, but it's a good rule to do to really look at your reference photo. Make sure that you're painting what you see and not what you think you see. And you can see how I'm referring back and forth to it to really get a gauge of what I should be painting. Ideally, I should have actually lowered that Kindle down and had it a little closer um, to what I was painting. But um, maybe I thought that I didn't need it so much because I'm painting a rug, but it's always good to have that Kindle close by or your photo printout very, very close to your canvas. So I'm not just uh, reaching that paint across the surface of the, the rug and basically providing some contrast between the form of Daniel and, and this rug. And you can see I went for color right away. I didn't do it in black and white. Um, I, I feel that doing a black and white grisaille is unnecessary. Um, it does work very well for oil paintings, but for acrylic where the light is shining through and um, acrylic doesn't have quite the saturation level, quite the richness that oils have, um, I think that you, you're better off doing the glazing um, with color as soon as possible. But it is good to start off very simply and add more complex mixtures of color later. Uh, the point is in the beginning to basically build a foundation for your future layers to rest upon. Just like building a house. A house builder would not build a house um, putting in the uh, drywall and the electrical wires, unless he had a good foundation in place, unless he had the headers in, unless he had the footers in, unless he had um, the entire uh, skeleton built first that he could start attaching his drywall to. He, he, you know, you have to do these things in order. And the same way with acrylic painting, you want to have a good foundation set up before you start doing a lot of color work, a lot of detail work. And now I'm working on the um, interior of the face and I'm just basically filling in the um, shadows on the nose and the eyes really getting that contrast between light and dark and I had a very dramatic light I modeled for this um, painting so I actually took a photograph of myself uh, set my uh, camera up on a tripod and did a self timer and then I put on some biblical clothing that I had and did the poses for this painting. 
um, but it's very, very important to really establish the contrast. And I'm working on not only the face, but the neck area. And using um, raw umber dark and a little bit of alizarin crimson to get that initial skin tone, if I remember correctly. And now at this point, I'm starting to add some detail into the clothing, um, just refining the areas a little bit and uh, trying to get some of those interior wrinkles. So matching some of the, uh, the shading that took place in the initial layer. I'll sit back a little while and study, look at my reference photo, look at my painting, make sure that I'm interpreting what I see in the reference photo correctly so I can accurately portray this. Now I'm using the same glaze, again, raw or dark, and I believe alizarin crimson, and I'm adding that onto the hands. Um, so I'm going over that initial glaze, which was basically just raw or dark, and adding a little more contrast. Also putting a little bit of shading into the interior of the ear, because the ear canals generally are quite dark, and I want to separate that out. Finally, I'm going to finish up by adding um, a glaze onto his leg areas. And I'm just looking in my reference photo for the right image for that. Again, basically using this small brush and just filling that in very precisely. Um, I try to balance out between having a larger brush, larger flat will allow you to apply the glazes much more smoothly with, with less uh, roughness and blotchiness. But the trade-off for using those very large brushes is that you lack the precision on the edges. So if you're trying to paint precise shapes and not go past the boundaries you designated in your sketch, um, it's much harder to do that with those large brushes. So I try to work it in between. And sometimes I use brushes that are a little too small, but uh, you, you can make it work if you really smooth it out well and apply it quickly. Now I'm working on the uh, background again, adding another layer on this area that's next to the opening of the window and just smoothing that out. Uh, I believe this is a three quarter inch flat that I'm using and basically again, just raw umber dark. Um, I think I might have a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in as well to make it somewhat darker in value and a little bit cooler in tone. Now you can see I'm establishing that edge of the wall. So I painted it only up to the edge, um, but then I decided, well, what the heck, let's go a little bit past that and bring that shadow down further because in the reference photo, the shadow um, does actually extend out a little bit. But I still have that edge um, visible, so when I wanna add another layer to it, I can see where it's at. And here I'm just kind of fading it out using a little bit of uh, a glaze. And that is the end of the video. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you'd like to uh, receive more tips, more tutorials, go to Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. That's realisticacrylic.com. And I have several tips and tutorials there that'll help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And God bless. We'll see you in the next video.